We look at the web of funds and investments which Hindenburg alleges show the link between the SEBI chief and Vinod Adani, elder brother of industrialist Gautam Adani. A report by the Indian Express shows Mauritius-based IPE Plus Fund 1 is in prime focus in the scandal surrounding SEBI chief Madhavi Puri Butch and her husband Thawal Butch. According to the report, this fund had investments from Vinod Adani and is part of two of the 13 offshore funds which form a part of the web under SEBI's scrutiny. Now, records accessed by the Indian Express and documents from Hindenburg show a clear link between the Butch couple's investments and the fund under scanner. Butch's investment sub-fund, Global Dynamic Opportunities Fund, was managed by Trident Trust Company based in Mauritius. Trident Trust Company was also the declared beneficial owner of the Emerging India Focus Fund and EM Resurgent Fund. These two are part of the 13 foreign entities under SEBI's scrutiny. Global Dynamic Opportunities Fund is a hedge fund operated by IIFL Capital, which also manages IPE Plus Fund. Butch and her husband invested in IPE Plus Fund 1 from 2015 to 2018. And this coincides with the time period under scrutiny starting in 2016-2017 for the two funds in focus. In October 2020, when Butch was a whole-time member, SEBI initiated the probe. Hindenburg comes just Hindenburg claims just days before Madhubi Puri Butch became a SEBI member, Dhawal Butch took over as the sole operator of the fund in March 2017. In February 2018, the SEBI chief instructed the fund management to redeem the entire investment. In response to that, the SEBI chief and her husband issued a joint statement recently and they said that when in 2018 Mr. Ahuja left his position as CIO of the fund, we redeemed the investment in that fund. Quote unquote. The couple stated that Ahuja was the CIO of IIFL and Thawal's childhood friend and said, all disclosures and recusals have been diligently followed, including disclosures of all securities held or subsequently transferred. They added, as confirmed by Anil Ahuja, at no point in time did the fund invest in any bond, equity or derivative of any Adani Group company. Now, countering that statement, Hindenburg said that Madhubi Butch's response includes several admissions and raises numerous new critical questions. The U.S. firm has demanded the SEBI chairperson's client list and the research firm challenged the SEBI chief to commit a, to a full transparent and public investigation into these issues. Hindenburg has also questioned the integrity of SEBI's probe into Adani Group's fraud with Butch's involvement in such fronts. All right, for more on this, we are now being joined by Mark Matthews, who's the Managing Director at Bank Julius Bear and & Company and prominent Asian markets expert joining us live from Singapore. Mark, thank you so much for joining us, making time for World Business Watch. How do you read the market's reaction to the Hindenburg versus SEBI chief saga? From what I can gather, the Indian investors I've spoken with see a lot of smoke and mirrors mm -hmm. in this whole story and the sense that Mrs. Butch and her husband uh, did invest in that offshore fund, but it was almost 10 years ago, and they did so as private investors. And yes, it's true that Mr. Butch is an advisor to Blackstone, but that's not something anybody couldn't have found out or known about before. So we'll see what the Supreme Court has to say. But as a layman, I can't see any evidence to support impropriety in either of those accusations. And when I look at the stock market and its reaction, the story came out on Sunday. Yesterday, the market closed basically flat. It's flat at the open today, um, quite reminiscent of the last time when Hindenburg Research broke a similar story, January of last year. And um, the market went down 4% initially, then it continued to go down about 4% until March. But my recollection of those times was that the market was far more concerned with the Federal Reserve and Reserve Bank of India raising interest rates than it was this particular story. And so I think if there was really some kind of chronic system-wide problem with corruption in India, there's just no way that the Indian stock market 
could have had the kind of returns which it has had um, over the last 10 years, 14% per year, over the last 10 years before that, 17% per year, that's simply not possible um, if um, there's a you know, tremendous amount of corruption in the system. So I don't see investors shifting their focus away from India's superior macroeconomic backdrop toward you know, much greater scrutiny on you. this kind of thing. Mark, uh, if I were to also get a perspective from you from an international standpoint, what impact will the Hindenburg SEBI chief saga have on foreign investors, if you could weigh in on that? So far, the only big media that I've seen report on this issue is um, the Financial Times. But uh, I checked, the Wall Street Journal has not reported on this. And neither has the New York Times or the Washington Post. So I think it's reflective of the low interest of foreign investors in Indian markets, which is unfortunate and incorrect. But I think right now they're, they're so happy with the very good returns in the U.S. stock market, and they tend to put all of the emerging markets together in one asset class, which I think is also misguided. So... The ones who are looking at it, the foreigners who are invested in India, I think they they simply see that politics and business are intertwined in India and around the world. I mean, just look at all the big technology sector donors to both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. But that doesn't dilute the fact that those big technology companies have very good returns. And so their share prices have been good to invest in. All right, Mark, thank you so much for joining us and sharing all your insights. That was Mark Matthews, Managing Director at Bank Julius Baer and & Company and prominent Asian markets expert joining us from Singapore. Always a pleasure hearing your thoughts on matters.